government ministers, National Statistics and Information Authority, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, Sobaker. It is a great pleasure to be here with you today to launch the preliminary findings of Income, Expenditure and Labour Force Survey 2019-2020, especially because today the launch falls during World Children's Day celebrations. To drive positive change for our children, especially the most marginalised, we need data and evidence, while we continue putting child rights at the heart of national plans and policies. And this is why this survey is valuable. It will not only update data on key indicators of the Sustainable Development Goals, but it will also enable government partners and others to carry out evidence-informed planning and budgeting. For the first time ever in Afghanistan, the survey team utilized the computer-assisted personal interviewing technique. Despite the challenges faced, this enabled the National Statistics and Information Authority to release results within two months of completion of data collection. These efforts are commendable, especially that it was partly completed during the difficult times of COVID-19. I would like to congratulate the National Statistics and Information Authority for getting this job done and getting it done well. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, UNICEF places evidence-informed thinking at the heart of its strategic planning and advocacy efforts. Evidence is seen as key to understanding the barriers that hold children back and to developing the solutions that can overcome those barriers to ensure that no child is left behind. And for that, UNICEF supported the production of water quality testing in this survey from training to analysis. Our team really appreciates the rich data set, one of the few that includes both E. coli and arsenic. In collaboration with ILO, UNICEF also supported the analysis of child labour estimates. These estimates will update the child labour statistics since 2012. With Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, UNICEF supported the multi-dimensional poverty estimation. These estimates enable Afghanistan to draw trends, building on the 2016-17 estimates and to monitor the impact of policies and programs in addressing poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, data and evidence is critical for the fulfillment of our mandate to reach every child. Data and evidence do not, for themselves, change the world. They make change possible by identifying needs and gauging progress. I would like to reiterate our readiness and commitment to support your work in addressing gaps and challenges in availability and quality of data and evidence in Afghanistan. Again, congratulations for providing quality and timely data to inform policy making and budgeting for children. Tashakor Manana. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sabina al Kaya and direct the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative in the University of Oxford. And we have been working with NSIA, the National Statistics and Information Authority in the government of Afghanistan, on the development of their official multidimensional poverty index, which was launched in 2019 using the 2017 data from the Afghan Living Conditions Survey, ALCS. And today, we would like to most warmly congratulate um, NSIA and the government of Afghanistan on the new survey, which gives us the data required to update also the AMPI or Afghanistan MPI, which was developed by the NSIA um, earlier. Afghanistan's national MPI has five dimensions and 18 indicators and it covers um, nationally all of the region of the country and can be disaggregated by rural, urban and Kuchi populations as well as by the provinces. It can also be broken down by each indicator to show what is the composition of multidimensional poverty. That is, what of those 18 indicators 
our people experiment, experiencing deprivations in at the same time. The dimensions cover health and education and living standards and employment and shocks, so are very pertinent to a gamut of developmental challenges. In the new survey, the data are strong and robust in quality. They are not exactly the same definitions, and so we have not yet harmonized to obtain strictly comparable definitions. But in the earlier AMPI, 51.7% of people were identified as poor because they were deprived in at least 40% of those five dimensions. And now 49.4% of people are poor according to multidimensional definitions of poverty. The MPI, the Multidimensional Poverty Index, the official statistics has reduced from 0.272 to 0.265. Again, um, we have a lot more to understand as we investigate the data in detail, led by the colleagues uh, and uh, very much our seniors in the NSIA. But it looks like there was a progress strong in rural areas. It looks like key indicators like female and male schooling went down. And so we look forward to understanding these changes and to working together to reduce multidimensional poverty even further in the coming period. FAO and NASA Statistics and Information Authority have been working very closely with each other for the last several years. In particular, FAO provided technical support to incorporate uh, prevalence of undernourishment and food insecurity and experience scale into the national surveys and that was quite a significant contribution and one important uh, development is that NSIA included uh, the FIAS and uh, POU survey in 2019 uh, and FAO provided technical support on how to revise the food consumption model and estimate the prevalence of undernourishment. Uh, in the meantime, FA also provided a training on methodology and calculation of prevalence of undernourished nourishment and food insecurity experience scale uh, of HDG indicators 2.1.1 and HDG 2.1.2. So in summary, uh, the collaboration has been excellent and I'm happy that being a technical agency, FAO has been able to provide the required technical support to strengthen the capacity of NSIA. <music>
the COVID-19 pandemic poses very real risks of backtracking. Positive trends may falter and child labor may worsen. Evidence is needed for monitoring purposes and to guide crisis responses and the development of informed policy solutions related to child labor. It will also help to identify the needs of affected populations. Next year, 2021, has been designated as the International Year for the Elimination of Child Labour by the United Nations Member States. Now more than ever, we need evidence and actions to achieve SDG Target 8.7. The survey results that are launched today are rich, and I believe they will contribute immensely as an integral part of evidence-based policy development, covering a range of subjects including poverty alleviation. The data is timely, especially now when COVID-19 has disrupted the world economies. Although most of the information was collected before the pandemic and thus will not provide the impact of COVID-19, it still provides us the opportunity to get the baseline information from which to measure the impact of this pandemic. Finally, I would like to reiterate my gratitude to NSIA and reassure you that the ILO looks forward to con continue our collaboration and also continue to work with sister UN agencies to further uh, work on the production of labor-related statistics. And with this, I wish you plenty of success and a good day ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs>